Lori. Hi. Um, I know in 99% of the, the cases, the quarterback skill set will determine what the offense will play. <coughs> but because you have such two great options at QB, could the reverse be a little bit true this year with your team? What the skill players do well may determine what quarterback fits best? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think necessarily that we're looking at it that way based on who, how the skill players are performing more, just the level of execution of the quarterback, the moving the team, the leadership, the ability to command the offense. And so that entire picture that you need a quarterback to do, who's doing better at it? Both are really good at it. Both have been good at it in games. And uh, that competition is still going on. Can you give an idea of just how much you guys studied last year's Virginia Tech game in the offseason? Uh, quite a bit. Uh, quite a bit. Yeah, we uh, took a close look at uh, what we did. We took a close look at what they did and uh, evaluated and learned and have tried to uh, be prepared for what they might do because they may not do the same thing. How painful was that to relive that? Uh, it's painful. At the end of the, the day, though, it uh, helped us in some ways evaluate our offensive philosophy, offensive game planning, preparation, uh, practice habits, and it allowed us to grow quickly and understand that we weren't, you know, maybe as good as we thought we were or weren't where we needed to be. And so we expedited and changed kind of our teaching and how we prepared, and uh, it helped us grow in the long run. Yeah, and uh, could you give us an update sort of on the uh, pecking order, et cetera, at that wide receiver spot now with Noah Brown? He's gone for the year and stuff. Just who are you guys? Who's in the running? Who are, who are you looking at? Who has kind of caught your eye in the last couple of days? Uh, former, uh, Big Ten, former Big Ten player of the year is doing well out there. We like him. And, uh, playing out wide? I mean, he's hybrid back, right? I mean, or, he's, or, all he's all over the place. He's just a – athlete out there. No, Braxton has looked good and is really growing into that position and had a great attitude about learning it. Um, you know, Michael Thomas is, is uh, a go-to guy, you know, a guy we like a lot who's had a productive career here so far and expecting big things from him. Um, Curtis Samuel out there. You know, you've got, uh, you know, for this game, a, a variety of other guys that we can look to, you know, and then we have our big tight end, Nick Bennett. So, um, yeah. but, but specifically wide receiver like Johnny Dixon, some of those guys. Is anybody yeah, there's a whole group of those guys with Johnny Dixon, Paris Campbell, Terry McLaurin that uh, are all going to have roles early on in the, in the season and roles in this game. So, uh, and we're trying to work through that. You know, we have a little mock game tonight, mock scrimmage that we're due just to kind of evaluate, continue that process. But all those guys have – been getting reps out there at practice. We have got to talk to you since no one got hurt, but just how stunning was that and how for you personally and stuff? I mean, he had been having, a, I guess, a really good camp and stuff. Yeah, for our, for our team, it was, uh, it was tough because everybody watched his growth over the last year. Very talented individual, um, somebody that was going to heavy, you know, weigh heavily into what we were going to do uh, this year. Um, you know, personally, it hurt because I recruited him. So I kind of uh, knew his family and been to his home, been to his school many times, very close to his high school coach. So when a, a guy that you bring here, you know, and you have to call his mom and tell him that he went down, that's hard. But uh, they're great people, great family. And, uh, you know, we'll look forward to having Noah back with us when he heals up. But, uh, you know, that'll be next year, obviously. Second row left. And when you're putting together a game plan and you, you look on the other side, you see Virginia Tech has an All-American corner guy who's going to be probably a first-round pick. How did that change things at all of how you approach attacking the defense when there's a, a, a lockdown corner if you want to that? Well, they have a very good defense in general, and uh, he's one of their high-level players. They have many good players, though, high-level players. Um, I think you just always look for matchups. You look for how do you match up and – in all areas, a wide receiver, uh, how do you match up up front and find your matchups and try to evaluate 
what you can do in those matchup situations. Um, but, uh, yeah, we just have to be smart and prudent about what we do. And, uh, you know, again, look at how much do we want to attack him, how much do we not want to attack him, and how, how do we want to progress with our players. So, you know, and you can't always control. They get to decide where they put them. You know, we can't know for sure where he's going to be, who's he going to cover in each formation, where's he going to be. So some of that has to be uh, as the game progresses. Situation where they decide to, to have him follow Mike Thomas around the field. Mm -hmm. Are you confident in the other guys who haven't played much that they'll be able to? Oh, we're very confident in our team and very confident in the other players. Uh, and we're confident in Mike Thomas. Mike Thomas will be pretty highly, last I checked, he's a pretty good player too. So, you know, he'll... He'll go out there and battle. We, we aren't uh, worried about Mike Thomas and him playing a great game and being productive. Although we know the quality of player that if that's the guy that covers him, we know how good he is too. So that's, that's one of those big time matchups. Front row left, Doug. Ed, can you just put into words your offensive line, where it is right now compared to where it was last year going into mm -hmm. the Virginia Tech game as we evaluate mm -hmm. this matchup again? Uh, about... 12 months more experience, 12 months more of being together. Uh, no, they're, you know, obviously they're a mature group, a uh, very close group, a very veteran weathered group that's gone through, you know, a season like we had last year, finishing strong, playing well at the end of the year. And, uh, you know, we have two guys who were voted captain in that group, so they're kind of the leaders I would say, in how we do business and, and our mentality. Um, but we're way further ahead because at this point now we're trying to make each one of them better in little details. Last year we were just teaching them how to play, how to practice, how to get lined up, and how to execute assignments. Now we're into more detail of how to take it to the next level. And, uh, but they're great kids, and it's, been, it's great to have them. You know, that's one thing that I don't worry about is if Taylor Decker is going to show up or not. I don't have to worry if Jacoby Warren and Pat Elfline are going to be there for us. So they'll be there. In this quarterback situation, we asked Urban a lot of questions about it. If the quarterbacks have skim similar skill sets, what would be the benefit of, of having both of them play? How would that help the team? Mm, not sure the question, really. I don't know. Uh, have a great answer. I mean, it's because maybe this guy does one thing well, and you know, Urban brings up what happened to Florida with Nick and Tebow. This guy does something else, but Urban's emphasized they're very similar. And so, I'm curious if, if the decision is made to play both, what would be the benefit of that? I would say that the, the number one benefit is that they are both great people that work extremely hard and have led this team to big wins. and played very well for us. So the benefit would be that they both, what they've given to this team, they get some reward. Because the reward for our guys is they work 12 months a year to go play 12 games, hopefully a 13th if you have a good season. And so uh, the benefit is is that like having two really good wide receivers instead of one, having two really good quarterbacks, it's kind of unusual because there's only one on the field at a time. But I would say the benefit is just having two high-level players on the field at the same time um, and rewarding them for what they've given to this team and program and their work ethic and their, you know, entire body of work, I guess. Back row middle, Steve. Yeah, Coach, uh, two questions. Uh, the first one, back on the quarterbacks, you had one guy who was all Big Ten, one guy who led you to the national championship, and they were playing at a very high level as the season ended their, you know, mm -hmm. his last game, Michigan, he was playing at a high level. Are these guys ahead of that spot? Are they back up to that level to start the new season? Or how would you kind of equate? Are you happy with the level that they're playing at right now? Yeah, we're very happy with them. I mean, I think that's a tough question because I don't think that you can start out a season being where you were when you played game 15 or game 14. I mean, there's something to be said about playing in games and playing at the speed of those games and not playing against your own team every day. So. Uh, to say that our team or any team starts out game one where they ended up at the end of the season is hard to say, or any player. Um, but uh, at this point in time, yeah, I think they're both 
performing very well. That's why it's so close, and that's why we'll continue to evaluate that. But, uh, yeah, we're pretty happy with both and where they're at. The other thing is uh, Taylor Decker talked about how everybody came down on the offensive line for the way that that game unfolded last year, but he made the point it was 11 guys, the entire offensive unit that was breaking down that created those issues in the Virginia Tech game. Um, just as you went back and looked at it, was that how you viewed it as well? It wasn't just on the five-man offensive line unit. It was on they were stressing you at every position across the line, and that led to what happened. Yeah, our entire team and coaching staff did not perform well, and team meaning offensive team. I'm not speaking about special teams or defense, but our entire offensive unit did not perform well. We left plays on the field at every position. There were things that the offensive line obviously needed to do better. There were things at quarterback that we could have executed better. There were things that wide receiver we could have done better. And so we didn't execute at a high level there. And uh, that's on us as coaches to get our players ready to do that. And we did not get that done. And the players were not able to execute at a high enough level. So uh, across the board, there's a lot of blame. Um, so, you know, a lot of times, though, Different things happen, and uh, you don't want to publicly point out individuals, so you just collectively kind of go with you. And, you know, a lot of that is statistical. So you say tackles for, you know, lowest rushing total in so many years, so it's got to be the O-line's fault. Lowest, you know, most sacks, it's got to be the O-line's fault. Well, not every sack or every negative yardage play is the O-line's fault, but that's inherently what happens you know, when you guys write about that or for those who don't understand what's really going on. But it's hard to block eight guys with six people, so there are usually going to be two people that are free. So sometimes it's we didn't get them ready and we didn't have good schemes for them as coaches or our answers weren't executed well. A couple more questions. Uh, front row, Dave. Along those same lines, uh, Coach, uh, Bud Foster came out last week and said that, he, that they're planning on playing you guys the same way as they did last year, man press corners. Mm -hmm. um, curious to get your, your response to that. Well, they did a great job last year. And so, uh, you know, I would anticipate that they would be very similar. And uh, we try not to read too much about what the other team does. We worry about ourselves and worry about getting our team ready and getting our players ready. So uh, I wasn't aware of too many of his comments or any of that. So, uh, but, you know, if you got something good that you think you're doing well, you're going to continue to do it the same as we are. And the things you don't like about what you did, you'll probably correct them and fix them. So our plan will be the same as theirs. What, what we like, we'll keep doing. What we don't like, we would get better at or change it. And so uh, that's the beauty of these first games is no one knows for sure what we're going to do. And they, we don't know for sure what they're going to do. But it'll be exciting to find out. Don't you think that's somewhat gamesmanship on his part, that, that they're, they're obviously going to have some new wrinkles and things like that. Do you think that's a little bit of gamesmanship on his Oh, part? absolutely. I think there's gamesmanship altogether. But, uh, you know, like I said, we're, we're focused more on ourselves and focused more on what we need to do and how we need to prepare and get our team ready. And, uh, yeah, I think that uh, their philosophy of what they want to do will play out as the game starts, and we'll have to figure that out quickly. Coach, you said the quarterbacks are close. In your mind, is one trending higher than the other? Uh, no, not right now. Um, they both they both trend really high to me. So, will you at some point pound the table for one or the other? I'm sure Urban will ask you who do we go with. Well, uh, coach is prepared to make that decision. I mean, obviously, the position I'm in, I'll have a part of that say, and uh, he'll ask me my opinion. And uh, the good news is I've been here going on four years with Coach Meyer, and if we've had 100 discussions that have been about opinions, we're very closely aligned in our philosophical approach. So we're not opposites. We're very similar, which is scary. And uh, in that, you know, when he thinks something, I'm usually thinking the same thing, and that's why I think it's worked well. So I doubt that I'll have a strong opposition to whichever way we go. But... Uh, you know, we're professionals. We do everything the right way, and uh, we'll have discussion about why is it that this is the guy we need to go with and what does he bring to the table a little bit more that's going to help this team win more games. And uh, I would anticipate that, you know, decision coming here towards the end of the week. And 
yeah, obviously I'll be involved in that, but uh, Coach will get the final say there. If you see enough, though, to say that the final answer will be a better or best guy as opposed to a good or bad guy. Yeah, we're not deciding between average and good. We're deciding between good and good. You know what I mean? We're pretty, pretty good at both spots, so we're, you know, trying to decide – because obviously they they've executed in games, big games at a high level. So um, that's something that makes it tough and makes it the most intriguing story going. <laughs> thank you very much. All right, thank you. We're good. Your number one source for sports, ninety-seven point one, the fan. fan.